Hello and welcome to a new and very exciting chapter in the history of the Bosch Australian Rally Championship. We're here at Calder Park for our special season preview of the 2012 Championship. It's a unique setting, as you can see, a bit like something you might find in a recent Ken Block, Jim Carner video or for Aussies, a little bit of Mad Max. And this championship really has something for everybody this year, no matter what aspect of the sport you're into. It's an expanded four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive series this year. A real shift in the top level of the sport in this country. The two-wheel drive charge is led by Honda, this time in the Jazz, with Mark Pedder joining Eli Evans in a two-car assault. And a multiple Australian champion is lurking in the wings, and we'll get the inside line for you on that story as well. New to the ARC this year is the inclusion of the East Coast Bull Bars SUV Challenge, designed for the fastest growing sector of the car market. The ARC wouldn't be the same without the excitement, the thrill, the sideways action that is the classics. And this year, another former champion has been lured back to the days of old. And if that isn't enough change, two more top rally drivers step into something very different in the side-by-side -side challenge. Polaris and Can-Am both make an all-terrain vehicle, an ATV, and both are making their mark this weekend with two of the big guns of rallying. We'll also seek the opinion of our resident rally expert, Ross Duncan, and plus a sneak preview of his new book being launched right here at Calder Park. You might think Calder is a most unusual place for a gravel rally, but in another innovation, ARC CEO Scott Pitter is determined to reignite rallying's popularity by bringing it to the people. We'll talk to him a little later in the show. Now, the departure of manufacturers from the four-wheel drive rally scene in recent years has prompted organisers to rethink their focus and a move toward the all-important two-wheel drive market. Australia is one of the first to truly embrace the concept of a two-wheel drive championship and this year will be a transition running alongside the existing four-wheel drive series. Now, it certainly caught Honda's attention, a company that is never far from motorsport. And this year, they've really upped the ante, too, entering two cars in the championship for Mark Petter and, of course, for Eli Evans. Boys, welcome. This is a really serious assault behind us here. Not just your local crew, but a lot of internationals. Some Italians here, some people from Mugen. Yeah, look, we've got five people from overseas at this event. So we're three from Italy, one from Japan, and one from London, uh, England as well. So it's, a, it's an international affair so far. We've got the two cars, the Honda G2 Jazzers, built to the new regulations for the ARC, which um, makes it pretty exciting. They're, uh, they're, they're good little thing, fun things to drive and, uh, you know, rally Calder this afternoon. I can't wait to get out there and really stretch the legs of the, the Honda Jazz and, and give it hell. Mark, there's a lot of energy, a lot of excitement about the two-wheel drive championship at the moment. It is the way forward, isn't it? It is the way forward. Look, you know, we said last year that the four-wheel drive turbo cars are just about dead. You know, little front-wheel drive cars are the way to go. and. Having tested these things now, they are just an amazing little car to drive and a huge amount of fun. When was the last time you ran a two-wheel drive car? Mate, I reckon the, the last time I ran a two-wheel drive was about 1998, and it was a V8 Ute, so the, the little Honda Jazz is a bit different, but no, looking forward to it. Different. Eli, for you it's familiar territory, but it's a different car this year. Tell us about the Jazz, and does it differ very much from the Civic? Look, we've got the same same engine that was in the Civic, so it's still the, the K20A engine. It's got 260 horsepower, the same gearbox, so essentially what's changed is the chassis around the car. So we're 120 kilo lighter this year, we're wider in the stands of the car, we're also shorter as well, so all the mid-corner and, and places where I think front-wheel drive sort of struggle, mid-corner push, it seems to have disappeared with this, this chassis, so it's pretty exciting. I think they're going to be right up on the pace. This might be round one, but you guys have been busy very much in the lead-up. Tell us about Italy and some of the, the pre-season testing. Yeah, look, uh, Eli, myself and Glenn flew over to Italy in the middle of January, spent a couple of days at the workshop in Milan, uh, then went down to Tuscany for a three-day test with Guy Wilkes. So that was pretty special, being going across to Italy to test the cars. And uh, earlier this week, we had a really good test up near the Rally Victoria roads just to to settle ourselves down and get ready for the weekend. It seems nice and affable right now. Is it a case of uh, teammates all part ways from here and it's every man for himself? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think we'll that's see, right. We're pretty good mates at the start, but you know, we haven't started round one yet, so we'll know more tonight and I think uh, we probably, by the end of the weekend, we might not even talk to each other. Yeah, if, we, if we get to Perth and we punch it on, you'll know it's not all good. <laughs> yeah. Well, boys, it's a very exciting time for the championship, a very professional-looking outfit. To the both of you, we wish you the very best. Thank you, Greg. Honda might be the only two-wheel drive manufacturer in the game right now, but the entry list is growing. 
Well, Simon and Sue Evans are no strangers to Service Park. They're doing an absolutely unbelievable job at the moment in the Australian Targa Championship. But there's some talk, more than rumour, that we'll see you competing on the dirt again in the not-too-distant future. Tell us about that. Yeah, the, the plan is that we will come back in a Mazda 2, uh, hopefully by Rally of Queensland. Uh, Hopefully take on some of these Honda boys, a bit of uh, brotherly rivalry there. Um, but yeah, they're busily building the car right now. It's a rally school project. Mick from Rally School's got a car all organised for us and uh, he's a little bit of help from Mazda. So um, we're hoping to get back out there. Simon's uh, bored out of his mind right now. You know, after, I mean, four championships, three different cars, Simon was really looking for something different. Um, when Mazda called us to come and do the Targa Championship, he just jumped all over it and said, this will be something different, this will be fabulous. Uh, and then sort of Mick came on and said, well, maybe we could do something back in the ARC. Would you like to come back on the gravel? And, yeah, and Simon was all over it again. So, yeah. So we're pretty excited. And uh, if everything goes to plan, uh, we should be in Queensland. Anything less than a win in the new two-wheel drive championship could be considered less than satisfactory. So we can expect some great battles in forthcoming rounds in preparation for their assault next season. Welcome back. Interestingly, the birth of the new two-wheel drive rally championship hasn't meant the demise of four-wheel drive. On the contrary, plenty of names have come out of the woodwork, sniffing a chance to win. Steve Shepard and Michael Bowden would have to be considered front runners, but others like Tony Sullins from the central coast of New South Wales return to try their hand on the open ARC competition. Well, the two-wheel drives now, the four-wheel drives, it's um, our last year to have a go. I've had the car in the shed for a long time. It's been seven years since I've been on gravel, so might as well bring it out and give it a crack and see how we go. But what's the mindset heading into to round one? Oh, awesome event. I reckon it's a great thing. It's a, you know, I hope the weather weather holds, but uh, yeah, we, we're going to go and do them all and see how we go at each event and just take it as it comes. Our emphasis is now on fun, not in doing anything else. So we'll go as hard as we need to go, and if it's, we're not fast enough, we're not fast enough. We want to win. Our goal for this year's first outright. Uh, last year we had turbo blow-ups here and there, and if you take them all out, we, we would have been in the hunt at the end. So we've got to come back this year strong, and uh, the goal is to win the last year of the Australian Four Wheel Drive Championship. Uh, there's a lot of guys here this weekend that have that have come back to the sport as well as just the, the local guys, the normal guys. Um, it's going to be on. It's going to be full on. Confidence for us has, has been great, especially towards the end of last year. Uh, we had a few mechanical issues, but like that just comes with any motorsport. We certainly had the pace, we've just got to fine tune a few things and yeah, no, I think we're looking pretty good. But you know, it's going to be tough. We've got a lot of good competitors that are behind us, um, so we're going to have to be on our top notch ball game. I think it's going to be a tough season. Um, this rally here, it's one of those things I don't know how hard to go out, just going to play it by stage by stage and just make sure we're there at the end and get a few points. But they won't have it easy. Premier League champion Charlie Drake and his nemesis Derek Reynolds from 2011 have both jumped up to the unrestricted ARC competition, sensing this might just be their chance to take some of the limelight. Uh, last year's battle was, was pretty good. I think um, it, it taught me a lot how to deal with um, close competition with, with another rally driver. Um, we, we had a slow start last year with two DNFs that put us under pressure for the rest of the season. Um, literally about two weeks ago we decided to do the 2012 championship. So um, we're now known as last minute motorsport is, is what we're going to put on our car. Um, so I'm looking at, at having, a, having a crack at, at Borden and uh, Ship and a few of the guys. Um, so it should, it should be good this year. The competition is coming from everywhere. Last year's junior four-wheel drive champion has scored a ride with the assistance of Petter Suspension and Tom Wilde will enjoy the consistency of the experienced Lee Tierney alongside to point him toward the trophy come November. Yeah, for me, it's fantastic. I was at a bit of standstill at the end of last year, where to go next, and um, to get this phone call was good because I needed to keep my name into the sport with all these two-wheel drive. Uh, regulations coming up and manufacturers may have well, possibility of them coming into the sport and the way this landed was just perfect for us to have this from from what i've come from it's an amazing feeling the new kid on the block is still on his peas but that's unlikely to stop 17 year old daniel day from mixing it with the best steve glennie will be guiding the sa youngster throughout the season
mention the name Middleton and those in rallying will instantly remember the New South Welshman that knows how to drive and how to look after his sponsors. An ardent supporter of rallying, Brett Middleton has seized the opportunity to showcase his company's skills as a builder of the new generation rally cars in the East Coast Bull Bars SUV Challenge. His turbo diesel powered Forester will lead the way for this new sector of the rally market, the fastest growing of any car right now. Many time rally sprint champion, dual Australian Formula 2 champion and trying to add the title of inaugural SUV champion. What's the attraction, Brett? Oh, something a little bit different. We've always wanted to do something different in the ARC and with motorsport and um, someone scared me the other day. 28 years of motorsport and here we are back doing it again. You run a successful preparation business. What sort of challenges has, has preparing this car created? Well, being the first turbo diesel Subaru Forester rally car in the world, it's been a big challenge. I mean, look, we do a lot of turbo petrol Subarus, Foresters, WRXs, STIs, but do you know that actually 48% of, of Subarus sold in the UK are turbo diesel. That's a growing market here in Australia. And of course, from our point of view, with performance parts, it's where we want to be. The bright pink is no accident. Middleton knows how to catch attention and he's teamed up with the McGrath Foundation to raise some money for a good cause. Yeah, well, McGrath Foundation do a fantastic job looking after I was told actually ladies and guys with breast cancer and they support the community. We've just taken two of the local nurses for a ride in the rally car with the help from Kumo and um, it was good fun and it's, it's obviously connects the rallying with the local people here in, in Colder, which I think is great. Cool. If you thought that was enough change for one year, then think again. ATVs or all-terrain vehicles have long been exciting off-road adventure machines. Manufacturers Polaris and Can-Am have backed the new category and 10 ATVs will start at the inaugural side-by-side -side challenge in 2012. Amongst their driver lineup are a couple of former works drivers, Cody Crocker and Michael Guest, who decided to show me what the buzz was all about. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> We're away. Pinned. I love it. This is something incredibly different. So the stage we're on is part rally, part off-road, rally first, and this is nuts. You feel exposed. You can feel the air. Oh, stand by. We're about to get filthy. <laughs> Woohoo! This is part of the more off-road type of course, as you can see. Runner. God, it goes straight away, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just fantastic. Down into the gully, it's obviously pretty rough down here, so we just take oh. it easy. Don't mind those super large rocks here. <laughs> and up the hill. Unbelievable. This looks way like Everest, but we got straight up it. Don't mind the drop over the edge. Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! And again. Woohoo! <laughs> Alright, nice drop off down here. Oh. <laughs> Bone jarring, but good. Alright, into a few more hills. Woo! Up over the top, this is actually the Polaris corporate area up here. Yeah. Make sure we get the wave as we go by. Woohoo! Alright, now this is a bit of fun. Oh, here we go. Serious challenge now. Woo! There we go. That's awesome, Cody. Thank you so much, mate. Awesome, mate. Well, it's a raw but very exhilarating ride. Firstly to you, Cody, thank you. What is the attraction to, to this new aspect of the championship? Look, this is a fantastic new class that we're starting up here between Polaris and Can-Am, and it's going to be a, a really good fight between us, I think, <laughs> too, in the, in, the, uh, in the championship. Things have already started, as you can see. Uh, and uh, for these utility type vehicles, uh, this is a whole new type of thing for them to go sort of a, into, the, into the Australian Rally Championship so we can do a bit of rallying, but we're actually going to mix up the stages with a bit of off-road stuff as well, which is what they're ideally suited to as well. And we had, I think you'll agree, we had a bit of, a, bit of fun out there on the, on the steep hills and, and through the water and stuff out there. Probably a good time, uh, Michael, to let Cody know that you've been given special dispensation to run the twin turbo on the sequential gearbox, is that right? I, I'm struggling with the 500 horsepower, but <laughs> the tyres tires are going to be a bit of an issue. But, but look, really, it, being absolutely fair dinkum about it, they're both absolutely standard engines, and this is the great part about this sort of motorsport, where somebody can, can come and buy a can or a Polaris and, and get involved. Standard engines, standard ECUs, the shock absorbers are pretty well standard.
Uh, let's throw a roll cage in, and you've seen how much fun you can have. You should have come with me. I'm a bit disappointed you jumped in with this bloke. He, he mentioned that I was uh, a bit messy out there, and I said, well, we'll just wait till we have a ride with guests. <laughs> it's a real mixture of everything that uh, that gets thrown at you in terms of the of the course as well, isn't it? Not just pure rallying stages that you would have been used to in the past. You, you have to attack some of the, the stuff that these things are actually built for. Absolutely, and the organisers have actually set this up so that we're going to do some rally stages, and just when we think that's exciting, They'll turn us off onto the really steep hills and nasty tracks that, that usually a lot of quad bikes and actual motorbikes will actually attack and we'll go and attack those too. So it's going to be great fun out there. There'll be no letting tyres down of rivals, will there any? Oh, of course, that's that's started to happen already. But but look, we've got I think we've got enough of the challenge between both of us to be to be quick in these conditions. We've got big tabletop jumps, steep hills, creek crossings, you know, it's all out there. There's a lake out the back there, hit that flat and you can really get it wrong. So it's a very, very challenging course. It's great for Cody and I to come back into the Australian Rally Championship. We've only been away, we've only seen before, we've been away a couple of seasons, we've got SUVs, we've got basically farm, pimped out farm vehicles, which is what this can is, is, what the Polaris is, mate, but I'll tell you what, it's a lot of fun. Nice to have both you boys back in the championship, have a lot of fun, I'm sure you will. Absolutely, yeah, we've been dragged out of retirement, I think it costs can a fair bit of money to get the bike out, but uh, you know, his appearance for you alone, you know. We've got to keep, we gotta keep the caps on, you want to see how much hair's left underneath there, that's amazing. <laughs>driven a rear wheel drive car so uh, it's certainly something different. You know the guys have done the most beautiful job of building this car, it's just uh, a uh, work of art and yeah it looks beautiful, it was a shame to go and get it muddy this morning but everyone asked me about that but as soon as they said go I forgot about the mud. <laughs> <laughs> You've absolutely kept the essence, the character. Yeah look we tried to do our best, you know we had a whole lot of photos of the car, you know we've got you know, all the exterior stuff, all the dash, everything, we've done exactly how they were and uh, yeah, we've tried to, tried to keep it as period as we possibly can. The fans do enjoy the classics. We know what a competitive human being you are, that you want to get out there and do some rallying again. Are you enjoying this? I'm enjoying it, but um, I'm starting to wonder if maybe we can run in the G2 class. <laughs> a season preview wouldn't be complete without a chat with our resident rally expert, many time champion, one more than most here in Service Park, Ross Duncan, and we are talking about wholesale change in the history of the uh, of the Australian series. Rusty, it's big. You know, the last big change was, of course, dropping Group G, which was the hot rods, and taking on Group N and Group A. But now we're going to have an equal championship for two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. And the reason why is that most manufacturers are involved in two-wheel drives. And, in fact, Australia is leading the way with this sort of change. Change is... It happens. That's part of the deal. Yeah, it is. But... We have got some, some good news in terms of the tyres. Kumo are back, it back, keeps yep. the playing field level. Yep, so the uh, front runners, the, uh, the outright guys, are allowed to use 16 tyres per event. The Premier League, which is just below them, are allowed to use 12. That's per event. Control tyres, one of the really interesting aspects of the series. You're doing something terrific, we think, and that is helping to mentor some youngsters throughout the year as well. Yes, I've been asked to do that, and I think back to when I was 17, you know, it was daunting to go in a rally and you didn't know what you were doing, but uh, I'm quite happy to give the guys a bit of advice whether they're doing this right or doing that wrong, so, yeah, I think it'll be good for them. Because if you're not busy enough, you <laughs> maniac, over, over summer, go and get it for <laughs> us. We've got a bit of a labour of love here. Dunko has been released at the opening round of the championship here. This is a warts and all look at the larrikin, the legend that is Ross Duncan. Uh, Rusty, it is. It's, uh, it traces my life. And I've been all over the world with rallies, which has been fantastic. But there's been so many funny stories. I used to do a lot of after dinner speaking, and people said, Dunko, you've got to put them down. And I'm starting to lose the memory a bit. So, But anyway, there is a, a bit of a shot here that might interest you. I don't know if it interests me, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You are mad. Uh, what are you doing uh, there? Well, that's uh, part of the television career when I went over and did a story for TV, went all over Western Australia, on the Sunseekers nudist camp. Unbelievable. He's done some great <laughs> things away from rallying and in it as well. We're looking forward to hearing what you've got to say about the uh, the Australian Championship in 2012 and good luck with the, with the book. Would you like to buy one? It's a 
44, 95. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I thought it'd be in the red light specials already. <laughs> Dunko is not the only comedian here this weekend. Shane Jacobson, a.k.a. Kenny, has joined the ranks. Is it a case of laughs hiding the nerves? No, actually, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I really am. I've got to be honest, it's because I don't pay the insurance on the car. But, uh, <laughs> no, I'm really looking forward to it, actually. I've, I've, I've had a bit of time in cars, and when I was younger, uh, I went through some really amateur rally stuff. But uh, So thanks to Rally School and, and, uh, and the gang out here at the ARC, I'm getting a chance to do it all again. What's prompted all this? Well, I think they heard, they, they, you know, they'd heard, you know, sort of around the scene that, uh, that I, uh, before my tarmac stuff that I did on Top Gear and all the rest of it, that I'd actually spent a bit of time in dirt. And I just hadn't had a chance to, uh, to get a full drive car around. So, uh, Rally School gave me this Evo 6 and said, do you want to give it a go? I said, you better believe it. And like I say, you know, the best way to race is in someone else's car, so <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> and someone else driving someone else's car is Ivan Thompson. Ivan, there are all sorts of different makes and marks in this championship. That's one of the great things about it. Absolutely. This is a very special one, and some might say, why rally it? It's, uh, it was just one of those things which my father turned around and said, look, you know, it's time to upgrade from the Datsun 1600. We'll uh, stick you in another rear-wheel drive car, and uh, lo and behold, we flew to the event, and uh, we've got an Aston Martin sitting there, so uh, let's just see how it all goes. This weekend is just a test to see if the car's actually going to handle it more than anything else, so they have um, We've done some preliminary measures to uh, just try and see actually how it's going to handle the dirt, so hopefully, fingers crossed, come through with some goods. The change in any form of sport can be met with trepidation. There's no doubt that it's challenging, but the level of enthusiasm here in Service Park is immediately obvious. It's been a huge couple of months for the CEO of the championship, Scott Petter. How are you feeling on the eve of the opening round? Yeah, no, it's been a fantastic uh, build-up and uh, looking forward to it. You know, it's, uh, it's a realisation of a dream to do this event. We've always wanted to do a stadium event in, in front of uh, hopefully thousands of people, and uh, certainly the competitive vibe is, is very strong. Let's quickly talk about a couple of the key aspects of the series this year. Firstly, firstly, the push into the two-wheel drive market. That seems to have gone exceptionally well. Yeah, look, it has. We've obviously put a lot of work into it and uh, done a lot of presentations to a lot of manufacturers. And, uh, you know, rallying's always been about market relevance. And uh, the Honda guys have come to the party with two fantastic little jazzes. And uh, obviously, the, the news that Simon Evans is going to be driving a, a Mazda 2 from the Queensland round is, is just sensational. And, uh, you know, we've got some manufacturers that, that are interested as early as next year. And in other motorsports series, there's always support categories, if we can call them that. There's a couple of exciting innovations this year, side by side, for example. Tell us about that. Ah, uh, look, you know, what a fantastic uh, addition to the Australian Rally Championship. It's, uh, you know, those guys are so excited to be involved. Uh, you know, they haven't, they've never done anything sort of like this before, and uh, we're just taking them around this morning for reconnaissance, and uh, the big smiles on their faces makes it all worthwhile. And you know, Polaris and Can Am have. As you see from the service park, have put a huge investment into this. They're excited about it and we're excited about it. Final question for you. When you look back over the history of, of the Australian Rally Championship, events like the Southern Cross are always held in, in you know, a special place. Are you hoping that this event may take on that kind of feel in, in, in time because you're bringing it to the people in a unique environment, aren't you? Yeah, we are, and that's you know why we called it a festival of speed, and that was always the, the aim, the dream. You know, uh, as much as we love rallying, we needed to get the other forms of discipline here to uh, to get the people excited about it. And you know, people that turn up this weekend will, will certainly get a, a good experience. You know, the rain's held off today, and we're expecting some more. So there's going to be some serious action uh, come tomorrow. So uh, you know, as I said, I, I hope it's going to be a. Uh, a, a, an event that people come to every year for sure. We hope the stress levels stay down for you, but the level of support from fans stays up. Best of luck. Yeah, thanks very much. Cheers.